We uh, can't since, hear you. Since the installation. Uh, since 2012, when I went in, you've been running this matter since 2012. Six years. Since 2013, yes. And do you have other locations throughout New Jersey? Do you have other locations throughout New Jersey where you operate regulator stations? similar to the one that is in place now at Bonnet? We, we have other locations that we, we do have the same parameters, yes, that we operate in, uh, like we're proposing this station, yes. Okay. Not with a temporary regulator. Okay. You mean <laughs> this Bonnet's temporary regulator station? Uh, that That's not our practice, no. So is this the only location? This is not the only location. Um, I showed you photos of another location that we have. Uh, a similar no, no, you didn't. Location. There were no yeah. photos showed at this yeah. hearing. Yeah. Shown <laughs> at this hearing. <laughs> we will show photos at this hearing. We'll show yeah. photos, but we do have another uh, situation very similar where, where we, we do have to uh, we do have to take this similar measures. Here. And. And, and, and at that other station, there will, will there be a proposal to do exactly what we're doing here because this situation isn't sustainable sustainable over the long term? Yeah, that, that's already in the works as well. Yeah. Mr. Sanders? Okay. Uh, how often do you need these stations? Every mile, every two miles, every 10 miles? Is there a formula of some sort during the run of the gas line that has to be one of these units? Uh, it, it all depends on the design of the system, and it depends on on the uh, on the system demand itself. And so, this system was designed uh, in response to the demand of the customer base in, in this particular area. Um, so, there there isn't a strict every so many miles you have to have a regulated station because the demand is different. You could have a very high demand in the first two miles which may cause you to have an, a, a different type of design in an area that may be more rural. Um, so it, it all depends on the, the planning and the and demand, the marketing uh, data for the customer base. Mr. Sanders, you say that this regulator station, how many regulators will there be in this station? Uh, there'll, there'll be uh, two runs, uh, which would, would be uh, there will be two two runs of regulators. So there will be two control valves, uh, one worker, one uh, monitor regulator on each run. So the four how does that compare with one at Bonnage now? Uh, Bonnage, we have two. We have two barrels. Yes. Mr. Sanders, <coughs> this, this system is in use. Where is the closest system that you're proposing to us right now? I'm, I'm not following the question. Well, this system is being used in other parts of New Jersey, correct? Uh, which system? That you're proposing? Oh, oh yes. I mean, this, this type of regulator... Yeah, what, what is the closest, station. the type of regulator that you're proposing for us? Where is the closest one to us right now? Um, I would say you, you probably have uh, one in Colts Neck, you have one in Lincroft. Different systems, but they're the closest, yes. You, you keep mentioning the Vonage temporary location. Why can't that be fixed so it's permanent over there? Why do we need to make a new one? Well, the, 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 the point I'm trying to make here is that we cannot have this station underground. You need to have a heater. This is a system that we cannot continue to operate this way. It's unsafe from a uh, regulatory standpoint. It's, it's like designing a, a, a potential failure into the system. So the bonnet site is below ground. Because this is a primary station, again, the, the station's function has changed from the secondary to primary. We need additional control at that station. We need heaters, we need filters, we need all of that because now we've changed the, the hierarchy of the station as well. We're still treating a secondary regulator, a set and forget regulator, as a, a, a primary regulator. And that, that's just not sustainable. 
And that's really the issue now is that that particular below ground station cannot perform the function that we need to have here for, for the above ground. So, so uh, hypothetically, if, if you had a 720-pound uh, line today, that sta the current station would not be able, that would not be the station you would build for this, the temporary one that you're using we, now. Yeah, the temporary regulator station was installed as a stopgap. Okay. It was never part of the original design, and it's irresponsible for us to put a station like that uh, in a system where you have 6,000 customers. Was the Vonage temporary regular station in place prior to the new pipeline installation in 2013? It has to be. Yeah. It has to be, yes. It has to be because, again, when, when you turn a system over, you, you have to have the stopgap in prior. So why wasn't this anticipated prior to the expansion of the pipeline? This is part of the, this is part of the project. This is part of the expansion. Is, is the station has to be relocated because it's no longer a 250 to 100 pound drop. We changed the function of it and therefore that's no longer a, a system that's, that's viable. I understand why you need it, what I'm asking. Microphone, why? please. Why wasn't this planned when the new pipeline was It was planned. planned. Why it was, was it planned? planned? This is why we, we didn't huh. since well, 2013. You weren't here from 2013. So what I'm saying is, if I were going to do something and I needed a component as part of that, I would have made sure that component was in place before I went ahead and installed my pipeline. So what I'm wondering is why this wasn't worked out before the changes went in. Because again, as, as, a, as a utility, we can't function with that mindset is that we, we can't always assume that we're going to get approvals. And so the ideas here are that we we would have nothing, right? We, we would have no improvements if we waited for the station to be approved. The station what? is really the, 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 the temporary station was what we needed to get through to the approval for the new station. Can I just, can I ask Craig uh, your question? The, so in 2000, when the plan was being formulated for purposes of upgrading the transmission line, there was always a plan for this type of station. Is that right? There was always, the station was always part of the plan. And I'm actually going to get to a response to your okay. question. Because that answer doesn't really make sense to me. So, or, or maybe it makes sense and I don't like the answer, but I heard it. I just, it doesn't seem to me that's how we would run the project where we throw something in and go, well, we're going to do it like this. We're going to spend, I don't know how many millions of dollars to store on the pipeline, and we're not going to make sure we've got this important, right, the are telling this is an important piece, this regulator piece, while we're just going to wing that later on as we get to it. I don't know, that doesn't, that doesn't really fit with how I would think the utility would be running. And I don't think, I don't, I don't think Craig was suggesting that. Craig, you were suggesting that it was, it was a two-part plan. The, and no. correct me if I'm wrong, no. the plan no, the, the record shows line, otherwise. Is that right? Excuse, yes, excuse me. Jay, I'm so Please. He said it can't be decoupled. Please. I will. Um, the plan for the transmission line, is that right? Yes, the plan, the, the original project plan was a two phase approach. And I was gonna, we were gonna get to this before uh, the board had its questions, but one of the things that I think will probably answer your question this hour <coughs> is the concept of site suitability, which has been quite a process. Is that right, Craig? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about um, your criteria for site selection and why this site's especially suited? Did I, are there any more questions? Or? You know what, I'm gonna let you keep going. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the board will make a comment. Um, please continue. And I'll make sure we circle back if you don't feel in, in response to this discussion that he's answered your question. Okay, may not be, may not have an answer for me. That's, but well, we'll see. Going. Okay. We'll see. So okay. let's talk a little bit about that. Why, you know, why does the site, or why did we choose this site and why is it especially suited here? 
one, one of the variables that we look for is proximity to the transmission. Uh, we we want to make sure that the step down station is in close proximity to our transmission to our feed. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, if, you know, for example, if you have a station that is a thousand feet away from the transmission line, <coughs> uh, you have a uh, it, you have additional pressure drop. You have additional issues that you that arise because of the, the pressure drop uh, associated with the piping. Uh, we we also like the, to site our locations uh, near the transmission line uh, for safety uh, and security uh, reasons. Uh, we, we don't want to put our personnel in harm's way by having the site located in a, in a deep wooded area or away from the deep path. But the, the focus mainly is to, to be within the corridor or, or near as possible to the transmission line. Um, we, we also uh, look at uh, our corridor here, uh, which in terms of suitability, we want to make sure we minimize the impact uh, to the environment. Uh, we, we don't want to site in low-lying areas or wetlands uh, due to flooding potential uh, and, and freezing uh, conditions. <coughs> we want to avoid uh, uh, farmland preservation zoning. We want to make sure that we're in areas that are zoned uh, as suitable uh, for us in terms of commercial, industrial, or utility uh, zoned areas. Uh, we want to maintain uh, uh, that we, we don't want to disturb uh, the tree line. We don't want to do excessive clearing. Uh, we, we found that, uh, that most of these conditions or all these conditions are met uh, here. We want to stay away from green acres, properties as well. And if you look at the zoning in this particular area, this area is, is uh, well suited uh, for, for this type of, uh, of uh, application and for this facility. But why wouldn't the one be off the beaten path? Would, wouldn't that be better? Because then we would have it away from everybody and maybe some of the concerns would be less um, if it was off the beaten path? Well, in this particular location, the, there, the beaten path, there's very little for us to choose from in terms of the off the beaten path. Um, so again, from a suitability standpoint, we, we have to fit within uh, the, the spaces that we have allotted for us here. Can I, just to clarify, because you did mention this <coughs> at the beginning of this portion of your testimony, when you say close proximity to the transmission line, the site needs to be along that corridor you were just describing. Could you point that out for the board? I think that's Exhibit A1. It needs to be along that corridor. Right. It would be along the you know the, the purple line here that uh, that runs uh, down through Homedale Road. And one thing that you I don't think you had gotten to um, was why the the design uh, requires you to have it on the southern eye of, end of the line in terms of reliability could you describe that to the board right and in general you know to speak about the transmission line is one thing but specifically the, the specific location being in the southern portion here um, it, it allows from an overall network design that we have multiple uh, uh, tier two facilities that would work uh, in concert so for example um, the Laurel and 36 regulator station, the Lincroft station as well, all feed this, this area. <coughs> if you have station one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, you don't want to site two stations too close together because they, they will end up, you know, it's like having two people doing one job. It's not as effective. They also end up operationally fighting each other in terms of demand. Um, the location on the southern end as opposed to the northern end also um, allows us to address issues that we have. So if we have three regulators functioning, regulator two ends up having some type of uh, performance issue, regulators one and three can make up, make up the slack, take up the slack for the other uh, regulator. If we move this location further north, you have the interaction with the Route 36 and Laurel uh, location as well. 
So we do have the ability for these two stations to work together and also to work in concert uh, with uh, the uh, Lincroft uh, facility. Um, and, and if we did have an issue with one of these other locations, uh, the three or four stations would work in concert from a system standpoint. And all those criteria you just presented to the board in terms of site selection and site suitability, that's a time-consuming process, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. And I know most of the board members are not aware of this, but we, we did present an application to this board in 2016 that I believe was originally filed in 2015 for just that site. So and, is that right, Mr. Sanders? Uh, yes, that's correct. And, and prior to that, there, is, there was an enormous amount of effort in just acquiring property rights, taking these criteria into consideration. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And that's that takes our, planning, our planning group's function is to go through our site suitability and, and look for suitable locations as well. I don't have any more questions on that, that topic. I don't know, Ms. Adlin, if, if you do. You, okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, site maintenance. How is this site maintained? Um, our, our facilities are uh, fairly robust, and um, we, we would uh, uh, visit this particular facility for scheduled maintenance uh, approximately twice a year. Uh, we, we would do other periodic checks, but there, there's very minimal uh, traffic in terms of maintenance operations. We do our full, uh, our full tear down maintenance operations annually. We also do our uh, facility uh, checks or other, other visits we have during the year uh, as well. Uh, we, we perform our maintenance with our, our maintenance crew staff, uh, which would be a, a single uh, two employee crew truck uh, about the size of a uh, UPS truck, about a 24 foot uh, berth, um, and very minimum, uh, very minimal effort and traffic on our part. I think you mentioned it earlier, but just could you talk a little bit about the remote monitoring? I know you mentioned it earlier in your testimony. Sure, Be because this facility, again, is a, is a primary facility, it is controlled and monitored 24 seven through 65 in our wall uh, gas control operation center. Um, all of our major facilities have the, the ability to, to, to be monitored. Uh, any alarms, high pressure alarms, low pressure alarms, excess flow, lower flow, uh, heater temperatures, et cetera, all are fed back to our gas control center. Um, and, and so we're, uh, we're constantly monitoring these systems as well as the pressures throughout, uh, throughout the areas as well. It may or may not be at a regular station. <coughs> Each of the primary regulator stations. Well, each of the yellow dots are not primary. No, those are the set and forget. So from a system standpoint, you may want to find a area that you believe is a sink or a lower pressure area or area of concern. Um, those are the areas that we would concentrate on. But from a flow standpoint and a, and a feeding standpoint, you want to make sure that your feeds are operating properly. Um, so no, we don't monitor every single station, but we do monitor every single system. Mr. Sanders, you said you uh, clean the gas as it comes to the station. Can you speak the microphone, please? Yes. Um, how often do you replace or clean those filters? Uh, those filters are, are uh, on a metered schedule, which means that, you know, based on the filter type and the pattern and the mesh, um, we, we replace it based on, on that. So. Um, for example, a station like this, it might be, it, you know, when you first turn on a station, there, there obviously would be more debris uh, in the line. We clean and blow out the lines beforehand, but um, more frequently in the beginning, uh, some, some locations we, we monitor differential pressure on the heater, on the uh, filters, I'm sorry. 
and at, at the point that you re receive an excess D DP, then we would go out and replace it. But it could it could be annually, it could be more frequently. It just depends on the flow. It's not monthly. Or no, it's not <laughs> monthly. Uh, we're the gas is not that that uh, that much debris in the gas, um, so it would more be more or less be. There were some locations where we don't touch a filter for three years. But typically, when you first turn on the station, there's no way. Thank you. I have a question. You, you said that the, the general maintenance is about two times a year. Just, just curious. The the current site, the temporary station. How often is there maintenance on that now, currently? For for from a teardown standpoint, it's annually. That's a regulation that we abide by. But from a maintenance standpoint, a check. Uh, we, we do that, uh, you know, several times during the winter. Uh, but in terms of maintenance, again, if you have a frozen device, there's not much maintenance that you can do on it. If we find that we have a malfunction, if we respond to, to a corrective type action, then we would maintain it. But um, we, we would visit this site probably every, every few weeks. Just to check, not to perform those tests. Uh, let's talk about fencing. We're proposing eight and twelve foot high fencing around this facility. Is that right? Uh, yes. Um, the the fencing, it, it, as we do in all of our uh, primary above ground stations, is uh, obviously a security measure. Um, it, it, it also uh, provides. Uh, uh, in in this particular case, we have eight and twelve. Uh, the 12 foot section is uh, in the raised uh, area of the, the front part of the station where we have a four foot berm and so the reveal would still be eight foot uh, considering that you have a berm, a built up berm in the front area with a 12 foot fence uh, uh, in the front area of the station. So in that instance, the reason why the, you're proposing the 12 foot high fencing in the front is not just for security, but it's also for screening? Yes, it's for screening as well. Um, we'll have uh, testimony to that. But there, there are inserts, there are slats inside the fencing as well uh, to, to, uh, to mask uh, the, the, the piping, et cetera, and stuff. What about lighting? Are we proposing lighting here? Uh, there, there really is no need for lighting uh, here. Uh, any operations that we partake in in, 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 night, in the nighttime, we have uh, onboard lighting on our trucks, and we also have temporary lighting that could be used. And why, just from a policy standpoint, why don't you light up these stations? Um, you know, to be honest, you know, we, we don't want the attention. Uh, we really don't want um, the, the light pollution at, at night. We don't want to have these, these facilities lit uh, because uh, we, we, we pride ourselves in our inconspicuousness, if that's a word. What about parking? Uh, really, we have no, uh, no on-site parking uh, because we don't have the, uh, the, any need for it. Um, our maintenance crews would pull in the facility and perform their maintenance. And, uh, no, no need for the next time to park it. We are proposing a sign here. Can you just talk briefly about that? Uh, yeah, we'll have a, uh, a uh, entrance uh, and security sign that's required by our uh, BPU. Um, the, the, the fence, uh, the sign would be on the front uh, fence entrance. Uh, of the facility, which would have the station name, our company name, and, and emergency contact information. And that's required pursuant to BP regulation, is that what you said? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I, I have a question. If just, uh, one of the things you spoke about was being inconspicuous. Um, and as there's no lighting, and there's fencing, um, and there's 24 7 monitoring, why wasn't the, uh, the unit? put further back from the road. Why was it stopped so close to the road? Uh, Mr. Sanders, in, in terms of this particular site, um, it, I think you know, I'm going to have Mr. Antilli address that because it's a matter, it's site constraints, but I, I, I don't want to put, I'm going to have Mr. Antilli address that if that's all right with you, Marion. Okay, I just want to just put this is the right time. Thank you. 
but but in terms of the operational side, it, uh, you can address why the preference is that there could be in close proximity of the right of way. I think you've already talked about it, but if you could just expand on that a little bit. Um, the the heater itself being um, above ground in, in the facility again from a operational standpoint. The, the heater needs adequate air, uh, it needs to have adequate draft uh, as well. So the heater itself cannot be uh, below grade, uh, but that location itself lends itself, uh, lends itself to maintenance of the facility uh, and, and of the equipment in case we need to remove it or, or replace components of it. It's, it's just impossible to do that if it is below grade. I think Marianne's question was, why isn't it further back into the site? Um, and I think you spoke about it earlier in terms of what happened, reliability of the pressure, the further back you go away from the road of what, right of way. Yeah, in general, I mean, in general, you're talking about moving this, the entire site. The, the heater itself, in terms of the, the location of the heater, is for, for maintenance purposes as well, but, but also maintainability. So to put it in the rear of the facility uh, because of the arrangement as well, uh, and again, I'm not sure how far back it is off of, of the rear, but um, from, from an operational standpoint, it's back as far as, as we can uh, adequately maintain it uh, on that site. Maintain in what way? Uh, in, in normal operation, so there's there's equipment, there's a burner, there's a, there's a internal fluids, there's things like that. You may need to remove the burner. The burner is a a longer piece of equipment that needs to be pulled out. So you're drawing into it, right? You're yes. Drawing into the site as it, as it is. We can't yeah. hear you. To I mean, I'm talking a few hundred feet back, and then you know, right now it, it's I'm, also, not, I'm not talking about a significant difference. I'm just, you know, maybe a few maybe. hundred feet. Yes. Yeah, that's significant. Um, okay. Why? Yeah. Why? Be because of the reasons that we what we just mentioned is that the heater itself, right? You're talking about a couple hundred feet now. You're talking about a larger space. Yeah. Um, which, uh, for for reasons that we'll talk about later, we we, we really didn't have that footprint, but. Uh, the further back you put your uh, heating equipment, the heating again is the preheating, it has to be first in line uh, of, of the operation. So the further back you go, the more pressure drop you're going to have, the larger pipe you're going to need, the larger heater you're going well, to need. That's different because you were talking about maintenance. Please use the mic. Well, that was a Please use the mic. Well, there's, I can't hear. Well, there's two. I, I think, point, Mr. Sanders, you were pointing out both of those components. I was, Is that correct? There's, there's two points, right? There's one as opposed to pushing it back further. I I thought the question was regarding moving it further back within the existing footprint. I think that was the question. Well, she said a couple hundred feet. That's not within, within the property. Yeah, within the, within the same but, property. Mr. Sanders, if I, you I know. I don't think I can answer that question because that's a site. Yep. Yeah, it, it, location, not a maintenance particular issue. Was this is the location that was negotiated with the property owner and, and the property that was available to the gas company? Is that right? Are you aware of that? Um, yeah, that, that would be part of that function. I was speaking more towards the maintenance and operations, not the site selection and whether or not this facility could be, you know, a thousand feet back. I talked about that from an operational standpoint. Okay, understood. So from an operational standpoint, you're telling us that it can't be further back because of the pressure drop. Well, th that's part of the equation for building the station is that you want to minimize that pressure drop. And, and again, from an arrangement standpoint, the heater is the first function besides the filtering. So you want to have your heater in line in terms of location after your filtration, you want to have the heat in there. Yeah. If we run piping, you know, again, <coughs> it's a hypothetical, but if we run our, you know, put our heater in another location, um, again, you're going to have the same issues with pressure drop. It may cause the heater to be a larger size heater because of additional pressure drop uh, to the burners and to the heater itself. So the heater runs on gas as well. Uh, 
and so that that line is not uh, a 16 inch line as well. Uh, so it's all part of the design from an operational standpoint. We want the arrangement to make sense operationally from a maintenance standpoint. Um, you know, it's just like in an automobile shop. You don't want to have your lifts overlapping each other. You don't you want to have your lighting, you know, in, in the right places. But you don't want to have your heater uh, in a location that your your team can't maintain or that will cause an issue uh, with the operation of the station. I feel like you're assuming things, though, and, and some of it. I am be, because this is the hypothetical. I think right. Right. But what I what I mean is that so in, you know this example, right? You couldn't overlap your lifts because they would hit one another and you would hit cars or not. Where the team yeah. They need to be a certain distance. But they may not need to be this, you know, 50 feet apart, or they can be 30 feet apart. And I don't feel like you're answering my questions with respect to. Actually, you answered my question, but I don't feel that Sanders is answering my question, which is, can they be? I understand you may not have the space. That's a different question. So the answer is. And according to what Marianne asked you, could it be set further back? And if it can't, what is the reason why it can't be set further back? And I feel like you keep saying, well, because of the maintenance. And you've told me there's almost no maintenance that you're anticipating is going to happen after you upgrade this equipment. So to tell me, well, you we have to go out there and do maintenance, honestly, that doesn't really satisfy my question okay. for me. Okay. Is this either okay. larger than the one that was previously? No. No, it's the same size. Aren't these the same reasons you gave us at the previous application? No, we're not talking about the previous application. Yes, but we had a heater 50 feet from the road before. Now the heater is pushed back 100 feet, and he's giving us the same reasons that it couldn't have been put, pushed back from the previous application. It seems to be those reasons can't stand up anymore because they've already relocated at once. Mr. Sanders, when you when a system is designed, are there certain design elements that, um, in order to meet your statutory mandate, you typically abide by with regard to proximity to the right away? Well, yeah, and I, I think what you know, I'm hearing two different uh, questions here, and, and from from an operational standpoint, again. The maintenance is, is just because it's infrequent doesn't mean it doesn't occur. And so if we did have to pull equipment and it's located in, in, a, in an area that our personnel can't get to, that, that doesn't make sense. Uh, what, what we're saying is that close proximity, obviously, yes. As we move it further back, again, you're talking about more, more pressure drop. Did we look at uh, look, looking at moving the heater itself outside of the, the, the existing scope of the, the, the facility that we have now? Um, we haven't looked at that, but it, again, from a practical standpoint, we're looking at increasing the pressure drop and, and issues associated with that from, from operationally speaking. And I'm, I'm just going to stipulate for the record that this is the area that was negotiated with the property owner. I mean, this is the area we are talking about that was available from the property owner. I, if you're asking questions, there are a lot of ask questions yeah. that was moved to a different location. Yeah, and, and I never, I never would say it can never be there, but there are consequences to changes in design. How far is the piping right now on 520? To what aspect? To the property line or the fence line, or how, how far are we from? Yeah. Uh, are you asking um, just to clarify with regard to the present station? How far are we to the property line? Could I have Mr. Antilly ask that because he's the site en engineer? Or I mean, I'm sure part of you know, but I, I can tell you right now. But I, I think he just. Just so why are you asking? Yeah, Mr. Antelli, can you um, tell Ms. Avrin how far the fence line, the piping, the, piping, it, the regulators you mean, inside the facility? The, 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 the transmission line to the fence line. Yeah, the transmission line. Well, to the regulator. To the regulator. Right. 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 Right.
first start with how far is the right of way to the fence line? Yes. The fence line um, through the mic. On the proposed radar station. Is Mike Peter here? Is 180 feet uh, from the right of way on the road. That's the new one or the old one? That's the new one. The old right. one. Our proposal. Mr. Sanders is telling us. the old regular station. Mike Peter is telling us we can't move further back from where it is now. Mike, I please. please I want to understand what the old. I want to understand what you. Listen. I want to understand what the measurements are from the existing location, and then what the measurements are from the new location, and what the, the uh, measurement differences are. Because you're telling me something can't happen. I want to. I, I, I just want to correct the record. I just not say it cannot. Okay. You're saying. Not what There's a consequence to, to making the change. To well, it's it's from a design standpoint. It, it's it's something that if you're talking about the temporary regulator station, yes. there is no heater there, and so that it's it's directly near the transmission line. Right? So within ten feet. The temporary underground station is ten feet off the road right now. It's ten feet off of five one. I, I would, I'm, I'm guessing it's within 10 feet or so no. of the roadway. Mr. Sanders, that's underground, that regulator station? Yes. And does that station have a heater? No, it doesn't. I mean, I, that's, I, but your question is to the temporary regulator. Correct. Yes. Mr. Sanders, please. Thank you. Mr. Anything else? I was really trying hard not to ask questions, so. No. <laughs> Really I, under, I understand. Okay. It, uh, sometimes it's easier to ask than forget at the end. Are we okay to proceed? Yes, yeah, please. Um, Mr. Sanders, in Mr. Plusis's review, review letter, although I don't recall off the top of my head which one it was, I think it was in March of this year, um, he asked that we discuss the potential for a fire hazard at the site. Can you describe that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to say that we, we've never had a fire at a regulator station, uh, an above ground regulator station that, that we've had in the history of the company. And, and how old is the company? Our operation, uh, during our, our normal operations. Um, 66 years old, uh, our company is. Uh, we have had some uh, incidences uh, where we, we had ignitions at, at our facilities, uh, where we had a lightning strike. Um, that hit one of our uh, stations. Um, the the issue was uh, was resolved within minutes. We also had another issue. Uh, I'm talking about years ago, 2003 or so, in Denville, where we had an incident where a uh, relief uh, blew and there was a, a ignition. Um, there was a, a failure and a ignition of the pipeline that was again resolved within minutes. Um, so we we have never had any explosions or fires at our station. And station. What's part of the reasons for for that situation that the uh, the fire has not happened at a regulator station and then of course in normal operations? Uh, yeah, there's there's a number of reasons. Uh, one one is again the inherent uh, safety uh, that that we in our designs, the redundancy. We also have a closed loop system, which means that if you don't provide fuel, um, you, you, you're really gonna limit the opportunity for ignition of that fuel. Uh, we do not vent to the atmosphere uh, here at, at this particular location. Um, and again, um, the characteristics of natural gas are such that there's a limited range of flammability. Um, between 5 and 15 percent uh, gas and air. Uh, gas is flammable. Um, however, if you're below, if you're lean, you cannot ignite. If you're too rich, um, you also cannot ignite. Um, 